basically any bot builder that is giving advice to new builders it's going to recommend the Flysky FSI 6 transmitter to new builders, myself included. So it only felt natural for me to make sure you guys know everything you need to to get started. In this video, I'm going to go over some how to bind and some receiver recommendations, how to set up models, set up your drive to have it all be on one stick, setting up a fail safe, so which is needed to go to any event so your bot doesn't do crazy stuff if you lose connection as well as setting up a safety switch so that way you can't, you know, accidentally turn your weapon on when you don't want to. As well as just going over all the functions of the Flysky FSI-6 to at least set you in the right direction after, you know, knowing the basics. Before we talk about programming the controller and the controller itself, I want to talk about receivers. It runs on a AFHDS 2A protocol, meaning any receiver that runs that protocol will work with this controller as well as you can get it to work with AFHDS protocol receivers if you do some changes in the settings. None of the recommended receivers that I have, or none of the receivers that I or other builders recommend run that protocol, so we're not really gonna get into that. While the receiver that comes in the box works just fine, it's a bit bulky for most builders, so they use the FS2A receiver which is much uh, sleeker and slimmer and smaller. And that's what I'm going to be using for the demonstrations in this video. Although most of what I go over in this video will also apply to the receiver that's in the box, just not the binding part. Another recommended receiver is the Malinke Nano and the Malinke Nano HV. This also has an onboard ESC, which makes it really convenient. Although a lot of things in this video won't apply. So I'm just gonna have notes for that. And honestly, I should probably just give that its own video. Although some of this will still be helpful if you are using a Malinke Nano. Before I move on, I should note that a single transmitter can be bound to any number of receivers, but each receiver can only be bound to a single transmitter. Before I get too into this demonstration, I want to um, talk about what each thing is referred to because there'll be a lot of talk about channels and whatnot. For the stick, channel two is going up and down and then channel one is going left to right. For the left stick going forward, this will be channel three. In, in many cases, this will be considered the throttle while channel four will be left to right on this stick. And then we have switch one, A, B, C, and D. And then we have these two variable switches. I believe they're called variable A and B. These by default, I think, are assigned to channel five and six, even though you'll notice that our uh, receiver only has uh, four channels, but the channel five and six can be used for mixing, but which I'll get into later. I'm gonna show you how to bind using the FS2A receiver since it has more st steps than the other one. Make sure that it's hooked up to power. Um, I haven't turned the switch on yet, but um, if I, I'm using the budget ESC because it has a BEC on it, it's probably what you're going to end up doing or something similar. Uh, for this one, I have the three wires going to channel two and then the yellow wire going to channel one. That's, that's going to matter more for a later step. Um, when you turn on the FS2A receiver, you're going to want to hold the button down and then and turn it on. This enables binding mode. The fast flashing is how you know it's in binding mode. And then when you turn on your receiver, you wanna hold down the bind key as you turn it on. And we're good to go. For the next step, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a profile. This would probably be best practice, especially if you have more than one robot. Hold down okay. Go to system setup. You can go to model select. There's um, 20 models that you can do. We're just going to use the second one for this. Hold, in order to confirm to do something, you hold the cancel button. This will be the same for when we do other stuff later on. And you want to do model name. And we're going to change the name of this one. I'm not going to show you guys that because it's going to take a minute. I'm using this goofy keyboard. Then we're going to hold cancel. And then we know it's saved. The nice thing about models is that you can kind of save settings for one robot and then easily switch to another without having to change your settings each time. I'm going to talk about some of the other system setup stuff before I move on. Type select, we're not really going to touch this because we're not using a glider, airplane, or 
um, quad copier, so this doesn't matter to us. Model copy does what it says it does. You can basically copy your current model, or you can copy a model into another model and re reset a model back to its default. Arc setup will go to it a second. Um, trainer mode and student mode we're not going to mess with. We're not going to me mess with sticks mode, but that there are different modes for the sticks. LCD brightness is self-explanatory as well as firmware version or firmware update and factory reset at the bottom. So we're going to move back up to RX setup real quick. Um, we're not going to mess with this because this is sort of the uh, protocol. Although if you're trying to use a older receiver, you may want to change that. Uh, we're not going to mess with that or this, but this is what we want. Uh, fail safe. I don't know if how to use the sensors um, and for this per for our purposes we're not going to do that no and we're not going to do anything with these settings down here either what we will do is we will go to fail safe and it's basically if we go to channel one to turn on the fail safe we just select down and we can and we want to leave that as is so hold on cancel to hit okay for channel two, this is our other part of the drive. We're gonna, that's okay, go down, hold cancel. And channel three, this will be our weapon. Um, it's okay, go down. We want this all the way down to be as the fail safe. Basically, what we're saying here is these are the settings that it'll go to if we lose connection to the receiver. Or the, yeah. We're just going to do this for this one too, even though we're not using it. And then, okay, that should have saved it. Yep. And now we're good to go. Now, if we uh, lose power at any point, then it'll automatically shut off. Just to piggyback on what I've already said, since the failsafe is important, if the failsafe is done correctly, when you, if the robot is running and your weapon's spinning, when you turn off the transmitter, it should completely turn off once the once it loses connection with the transmitter. I'd be sure to test this before you go to an event because an event organizer will probably, or at least should, dem have you demonstrate that your failsafe works. Also, not every this won't work for every receiver because it's a receiver side function, but will work for the FS2A and the receiver it comes with. So by default, out of the box, um, we don't have a very good way to affect control our robot so we're gonna have to do our mixing since it's currently this controls this motor going left to right going forward and backward affects the other motor that's not how we want to control our robot here's the quick way to control the drive of your robot just using the right stick you're going to want to hold down ok and go to the functions menu and go down to elevon and you're going to want to turn this on and you're going to want to set channel one to 100% and channel two to 50%. I know on screen I'm doing it the opposite way, but I had to reverse the channel in order to get to work. So I'm re-recording the audio. Also, if you find yourself, if the throttle is too much or if the turning is too quick, don't change that here. You're gonna wanna change that in dual rate, which I'll go over in a minute. And you're probably gonna wanna have your steering around 50%. And the throttle is really gonna depend on what motors you're using. Um, these are the switches I'll use for the demonstration. For the robot, I actually only need idle mode, but I'll have fly mode to switch B, idle mode to switch A, then throttle hold to switch D. You can switch these around in this menu. Um, I already saved it, so we'll just exit out of here. Throttle curve. Um, I can, if this is, if I set all these to zero, I can basically use this switch as a safety switch, so it goes to a normal curve when it's down. And when it's up, this is basically at work functions as a safety switch. So literally the switch has to be up in order for me to turn on the robot. But then when we're good to go, I can turn this down and I can actually use the throttle. Because the throttle, like I mentioned before, is set to channel three, which is where I want my weapon to be set to. Here's a quick demonstration quick of the fail safe and safety switch. Before I move on, notice how the weapon turns off once I turn off the transmitter. And also I can't move the weapon with the safety switch in the down position. Be sure to test this in a safe environment before going to your first event.
reverse is a good is just reverses your different functions or your different uh, channels. Basically, if something's going the wrong way, you'll just want to reverse it. It's pr pretty self-explanatory. Endpoints. This can switch the endpoints for your channels, basically for your inputs. Um, this is really only useful for the channel five and six because I'll go into a minute um, a better way to do it. Um, display, this just displays what your channels are doing, essentially. Um, this doesn't really actually, like, you can't actually change any settings here. If you go to auxiliary channels, um, this is channels 5 and 6. Um, although your FS2A receiver won't have channel 5 and 6, since there's not input for it, um, on other receivers this may end up being useful. Um, but you can use these for mixing, so you can as try assign some sort of mix to channel 5 and then assign it to a switch or to one of the, to either of these uh, knobs. I'll get in a little more into that in a minute, but you can change the source. And you basically goes between the, uh, you can also have it be none, but you can also just assign it to the switch, any yeah, of these channels to the switches or to these variable uh, knobs. Sub trim, this is basically the center for your different channels. By default, I wouldn't mess with this, but if you find that you're having centering issues, you can change that here. Trim can also be useful if when you slowly increase your speed, that one side of your robot starts to turn before the other side, you can use the trim in order to uh, fix that. Just be sure to have your wheels off the ground and do it in slow increments. Dual rate. Um, this is a better way to change your endpoint or change your throttle rate and stuff. So if we, if we change it for channel one, I can sort of change it how quickly this um, accelerates and whatnot. And I can change the uh, the exponent of it. So basically, I can kind of change the the uh, curve on how this uh, on how the robot moves. Um, you can mess with this for drivability and whatnot, or if, if you want to do something fancy with your weapon or your throttle. But I'm going to keep that. Also, you can have it use this switch to change. Basically, you can set a curve for when this switch is up, and you can set a different curve for when this switch is down. Or, or it calls it sport mode. Um, you can do with that information what you will. Um, I already assigned the switches, throttle hold. You can basically, if you want, possibly for your weapon, you can have throttle hold, where basically once you flip the switch, it holds your weapon at a certain speed. If you uh, don't really want finite control, but you just want it set to a certain speed and not really think about it, you can assign it to a switch and do that. I wanna go over custom mixes real quick, even though I didn't use them for this robot. Basically, I could achieve the same thing Elevon is doing with these custom mixes. Basically, a mix, you can have three of them on this controller, is essentially having a input on the controller in addition to its original channel can also affect another channel on the receiver. And for this, for example, channel one would affect channel one itself, but also channel two. And you can have a pot, you can change how much weight it has with the positive and negative mix as well as the offset for it, just to sort of tune it in. And then if we go back to here, VTail, I've already knew, talked, went over Elevon. VTail is a very, is similar to Elevon, but it's a mixing that we don't really need for combat robots. So if I click on it, it says Elevon enabled, so I can't have VTail on at the same time, but we don't need to worry about that. I should mention that I use Runamuck's website as a reference for a good chunk of this, so that's linked down below. One key difference between what they had and what I did is how they did the safety switch. They used the throttle hold, which requires you to turn the transmitter on before you can make it safe. So I like this way better. And if you want to learn more about combat robot electronics, I have a video on as well as recommendations on what to use and also all the electronics I used in this video. And so click that on screen now if you're interested in that.